You've designed a ring, but you want a more personal touch. You're in the right place. Welcome back to part two in our series where we're going to continue 3D designing and then manufacturing some rings and jewelry. In this installment, we're going to look at how we can use circular patterns to make our rings stand out from the crowd. When we left off, we had these two rings, the left graded with an extruded method, the right with a revolve method. In this video, we're going to look at making simple features and then patterning them around the ring to make them much more customized. Let's start with an internal pattern on this left hand ring. We're going to start a sketch, press P to turn on our planes and go from the top. If we spin the camera around, we'll see that this plane is perfectly intersecting on the inside of the ring. This is exactly what we need. Pressing the N key will spin the camera when you're sketching to look flat onto where you're drawing. I'm going to use the rectangle tool to do three simple shapes and it's very important to get them as close to this center line as possible. I'm not particularly worried about these being accurate or even. I will do the equals tool on the outside just to make sure that the three of them are the same thickness. The spacing apart from that, I really don't mind. This is all I need, so I'm gonna hit the tick. We'll spin the camera back around to a 3D view. Let's go to extrude and select sketch two to do all of the geometry we just created. By default, it's trying to add to the geometry, but instead we wanna do a cut. What we're gonna do is put it to remove and then change it from blind to up to face. Clicking on the inside of the ring will tell it that it's gonna cut up and stop on the surface, which means nothing is actually removed. The trick is to tick offset distance and then put in something really small like 0.5. If yours goes red, you need to change the direction because it's not actually reaching to cut anything. That looks great, I'm gonna tick. We're now gonna come up to circular pattern, which you might not be able to see because it could be on linear pattern. Hit the little drop down if you need to, to select it. Very important step here. We're gonna change it from part to feature. Part is when we wanna copy in whole object, but here we just wanna do the cutouts. So now that this is highlighted as features to pattern, we're gonna click on extrude three over on the left hand side. Our axis of pattern is the one we created right at the start, which we're gonna show with the eyeball and then click on. You can see it's doing four around the outside. I think it would look a lot better with a lot more. So I'm gonna do something like 22. I'm really happy with that, so I'm going to hit the tick. Next, we're going to practice doing something that comes out of the ring. If we press P to show our planes, you can see that there's no planes or virtual pieces of paper to draw anywhere except in the middle of the ring. To combat this, we're going to hit the plane button. We're now going to click one of the planes that goes through the middle of the ring and drag the arrow until it's in position. We spin the camera around from the end. What we're looking for is to drag it so it's definitely cutting through the middle of the ring. Here we've got quite a deep trench, so what I'm going to do is to make it cut back as close to the inside as possible. That looks just right. I'm going to press P to hide my planes and then come up to sketch once more. The sketch plane is going to be the new one that we've created, so let's click plane 1. We're now drawing on this area that intersects the edge of the ring. I'm going to press my N key once more to spin the camera around to be looking flat on. The feature I'm going for here is just a simple diamond. Once again, I'm going to keep it close to that dotted line. Like always, we can be pretty rough and then use constraints afterwards. In this case, I'm selecting all four parts and hitting equals. I'm just going to eyeball it to get it in the middle. That's all I need, so I'm gonna close the sketch. Now when I come to extrude, I'm gonna click on sketch three on the side because it's gonna be hard to select being on the inside. Sometimes you get stuck with this and you just have to eyeball the part so you can get to your sketch to click on and then eyeball it again to click it back. I'm gonna change my direction and then drag this in until it's sitting just proud of the ring. I'm gonna hit the tick when I'm done. We can circular pattern more than one thing at a time. So in this case, I'm gonna add a chamfer before I apply it. 
If it turns red, once again, it's way too large. So let's input a smaller number. I'm gonna come back to my circular pattern. I'm once again gonna change it from part pattern to feature pattern. And under features to pattern, I'm gonna click both of these new features. The axis of pattern is once again gonna be the dotted line we set up right at the beginning. You can see it's doing four, but I think once again, a really big number would look a lot better. Let's try 25. If you want them to go only one side around the ring, you can change it to 180 degrees. You probably need less account unless you want them to interact like this and to create this interesting shape. I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna hit the tick. The final thing we'll do in this video is to add some text to the inside as an indentation. We're gonna start a new sketch and once again use the top view. In our sketching tools, we have an A, which is the text button. We're gonna spin the camera around to the top and then the next thing we need to do is to draw a box where we want the text to be. I'm gonna do TT for teaching tech. If you want to change the text, you can't do so directly. You have to drag the box around the outside. If you want to change the size of the text, you have to dimension the box around the outside. Sometimes after the dimensioning, you have to bring things back into place. I'm going to hit the tick because I'm done. And then once again, come to extrude. I'm going to put it to remove, up to face, select my geometry, click on the face and then give it an offset distance. Once again, if it's red, put it to the opposite direction. You could pattern this around the outside, but I'm happy to just leave it at one. Once again, for only a few minutes of time, we've created two unique and really distinctive designs. Take your time and experiment with these, remembering that anything you've done early on can be edited by double clicking on the feature tree. It's great how one simple little thing applied the right way can make a ring look fantastic. In the next episode, we're gonna look at making a ring in a completely different way using a new tool, the loft. See you then. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.